Hello everyone. Now I'm going to conclude the, uh, my walkthrough of the four big tools of system dynamics with the saving interest uh, model. And just to remind you, causal loop diagrams, more savings you have generates more interest, more interest adds to savings, and this is a virtuous reinforcing cycle. Behavior over time graphs, so you can see key variables have only graph savings over time and what their shape looks like, so you can see a virtuous cycle. Uh, reinforcing uh, positive loop looks like this. Um, the stock and flow diagram, okay, so savings is actually a stock, so it accumulates up. Uh, interest flows into the stock, that's its only inflow. Um, so in this model, we're not taking any money out of savings. And then savings um, generates, uh, savings times the interest rate really generates the interest. So this is the uh, reinforcing loop in the stock and flow picture. And then lastly, we're going to deep dive into the Excel model and how to turn this uh, model into an Excel spreadsheet. Now, um, I'm sure all of you can do this uh, in this particular uh, case. But the idea here was to just take a simple case of savings and interest that you would know intuitively so we can focus on the tools, not on the model itself. So there's a certain way to model it in Excel that makes things easier. And uh, you can do this with hundreds of variables. So I built very sophisticated models using this particular approach. So I'm going to dive into the computer now and show you how to, uh, how to model uh, stock and flow diagrams into Excel. All right. Okay, now we're going to build this model in Excel. And what I did, just to remind me of the variables, is I drew it in PowerPoint and just embedded uh, my slide in here. So I can remember we have three variables, interest rate, interest, and savings balance that we need to uh, calculate. So the way I build these things is I put the constants on top. A constant would be something that has nothing, no arrows into it. It's just simple flat uh, uh, constant number. And we have one of these, interest rate. So I'm going to do 12% per year. And um, one of the things you'll discover later is uh, it's best to name your constants. So you can go up to this name box and um, type in interest uh, int rate or what, whatever. Uh, and that. Um, and that will uh, it'll help you in a second. Okay, and then the main part of the model is really uh, these variables over time. Uh, so let's do time in months for this um, for this uh, model. Now you could do this, um, you know, per day, per week, month, quarter, year, what what have you. Uh, and and it would calculate different numbers because if you compound interest daily, it's different than compounding uh, every month. Let's say so you need to decide kind of the accuracy um, that you need. But uh, for for this, I'm just going to do months. I think that will be good enough. Uh, I start with uh, time zero, which I'll explain in a second. But all the other months are basically the cell to the left plus one. Uh, so let me just do a page full of those to make sure everything is calculating OK. So that looks good. Now for any stocks, let's take a look at our variable. Um, savings balance is a stock. So you, I do beginning savings balance, and then I do an ending savings balance and leave space for the inflows and outflows uh, in between is the way I usually do it. Uh, this just makes things a little bit easier. What I mean by beginning and ending is in month two, let's say, um, the beginning balance of month two is the same as the ending balance of the month before. And then um, the ending balance of uh, month two is really the savings plus any inflows minus any outflows gives you the ending balance. So in our case, the savings plus the the beginning balance plus the interest for that month is the ending balance. Okay? So, and then we'll put in interest. Okay, so actually we just have the one inflow. So uh, any stock needs a beginning value. So let's say you had $100 in your account when this model uh, began. And that's the only variables you need to fill in this, this uh, time zero, is just any stock values, their ending balance. OK, so now let's uh, build the model. So basically, the beginning balance of month one, or any month, is the same as the ending balance the month before. The interest is calculated as the balance, the beginning balance times the interest rate. And we're doing this per month, so I'm going to divide by 12. And then the ending balance is really the savings in the beginning plus the new interest. And that's your ending balance. OK, so that's essentially building the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this out to here, make sure it looks OK. 
and uh, and it does look okay. So you can see the interest gets bigger every month. The savings is getting bigger by a larger amount every month. So that looks like it worked. The reason um, you name a constant, if you can see in the cell, when you move things over, it's going to try and attach it to the interest rate over here in these cells. But if you name a cell, it knows to keep going back to that cell. So that's a little trick that I uh, learned. So name any of your constants, and your formulas are going to work out just fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just generate this out for like 100 months, let's say. So I've got four rows. 100 is around the end of the C's, as I've discovered. So I'll just paste that. And let's see. OK, there, 102. OK, so we got 102 months. Uh, and that's essentially the model. So now that it's in Excel, you can do you know, normal things you can do in Excel. For instance, if you wanted to graph the savings, uh, just click on row 7. Hit that uh, graph chart wizard. Pick a line graph. Um, and then hit finish. And there you go. So there's a, there's a graph of the savings balance. It has that kind of um, exponential growth. It's not too pronounced um, with this uh, y-axis, uh, but that's the exponential growth. Uh, if you need to graph two uh, variables, I'll just show you how to do that. Uh, you do interest and uh, savings, let's say. So you select both rows, click that, click line, hit finish. Now what you're going to find when you graph two variables is some have very different uh, dimensions. So the savings is, you know, goes from 100 to 300, and the interest basically goes from a dollar to, I would guess, three dollars or so. So one of the things you often do in system dynamics is you have these mixed variables. So you, um, if you select the line, I'm going to give it another y-axis basically. So you select the line with a left mouse click. You hit right mouse click. You do format data series. In the axis tab, you say secondary axis. And then you hit OK. And then the interest is basically projecting on this axis and the savings on that axis. And you can change this axis if you want. In this case, the lines are kind of on top of each other. So you can say, oh, let's go up to 5. So you can see that a little bit better. And so you can see here's the savings on that axis. Here's the um, sorry, interest on that axis, savings on the axis on the left. And you can name these things. You can name time down here. You can give it a title. You can do all the things that uh, Excel uh, brings to the table. So again, simple model, but um, if you do it in this particular form, you can do very complicated models and not have to worry about um, you know, how exactly to, to model it. This way of putting constants on top, putting time here, doing a time zero, doing stocks as beginning and ending, um, uh, doing... Um, uh, a time zero where you put in the initial uh, amount and then just pasting everything forward uh, works out just fine. So now basically I've taught you the four basic tools of system dynamics. As I said, causal loop diagrams is probably the uh, one of the more interesting uh, parts. And then modeling this stuff in Excel so you can calculate kind of different flavors. So in our case, what if the interest rate was different? What if the savings amount, initial savings amount was different? What if I deducted $100 a month as an outflow? What if I deducted 5% a month as an outflow? You know, you could try out different uh, scenarios, as, uh, as you know, in Excel and, uh, and figure out what, what performs the best. So now the door is open for us to build much more interesting and sophisticated models in, uh, in future videos, which, uh, which will teach, uh, teach us a lot about, uh, about how system dynamics really works in the real world. So with that, I'll close, and uh, I'll talk to you next time.